Hey, welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a circular animation. We're going to we're going to take an object and let it rotate on its core continuously. And a main use case for that is to make a loading spinner like so. I got uh, quite a few questions of how to do so before. So I just decided to make a really short snappy video and show you exactly how it's done. So let's get started. I'm going to give a name to this shape, which I just dragged in and it's a static icon. If we would, let's say, preview it, it doesn't do anything, right? So I'm going to give it a name, let's say, Spinner. Again, give names to your objects you want to work with. And that's the best practice I can recommend you to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just hide our thing. So let's say we're going to hide it. And we're going to add a button, let's say, because naturally your loading animation might be triggered by something else. Then I click on it. I'm going to add new interaction. And I say on click, show or hide, and we're gonna show our spinner, let's say. We can animate it in, let's say. So let's say we can do something like fade, and that's gonna add our spinner in. And then we can also add another action, let's say, which is basically rotate after we show it. And we can rotate the spinner, let's say clockwise by 36 degrees or so. We can also animate if we wish, but I don't recommend that because it's going to be a jacked animation where it moves, stops, moves, stops, moves, stops. And we can also set an anchor point, but leave it in a core so it animates centrally on itself rather than just spinning around random directions. And then we can actually preview it and see exactly what happens right now. So if I click save, it shows and it kind of rotated just slightly. If we would compare with our previous, it started like here and then it rotated by 36 degrees to a side, which is pretty good, but it doesn't loop yet, right? So what we can do next is we can do something like fire the event. And let me actually show you how it's done. So on click, we can rotate it. I would then wait, let's say uh, one tenth of a second because we have 360 degrees, we can wait one tenth and then move it around in 10 incremental steps in one second. Again, play with the values. It might not work for you. I think it's going to work for us here. And then I'm going to say fire event, uh, click save, let's say button. And I'm going to fire event on click so that it repeats that loop. What we're basically stating here is once I click this button, show me the spinner if it's hidden, rotate it a little bit, wait 100 milliseconds and then fire it again. So it's gonna keep on clicking and spinning it behind the scenes. The users are not gonna know. You can attach this trigger to let's say on page load, you can attach it to other bits, it's really up to you. But the logic is that we need to create a loop where we basically rotate, wait a little bit and then fire that event of rotation and again and again and again. So let's preview and see if it works. So let's say we have a safe and then boom, it keeps on rotating. It's simple as that. I mean, again, it's really up to you if you want if you want to make it a bit smoother, you can make it faster, let's say a waiting time shorter. It's again up to you. Let me show you how it's done. So I would just go ahead and maybe move it by, let's say, maybe just wait a little bit less. Uh, so maybe just 50 milliseconds. And that maybe is going to add to that effect we're looking for. Maybe it's going to be too yeah, definitely too fast, but it's really up to you of how you want to do it. Again, sometimes the sizing also matters. So maybe we need to do it like 50 by 50. So it's a smaller animation like so. And then head back to, let's say 100 to mess. And yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good. I think let's preview it. And let's say once I click save, Boom, we have our spinner animation and it's not a GIF. You could drag in a GIF if you want to, but if you want to make it properly and make it like a by a pseudocode in actually you would do it like this. So I hope this was useful and I hope you know exactly how you can use this type of animation to preload your assets or let's say add some feedback to the user when we click save or load something. You can always do this way. Just to show you um, how you would attach this action to other bits, you could just take this on click event, let's say, or I would say those statements, just copy them to a different interaction. So let's say something like on page load, copy them in like so, 
just make sure that it fires the right triggers and when we load the page it would start triggering and, and rotating. So play around and see what works for you. If you find this useful, give a like, subscribe to this channel as usual, share with your friends. And if you have any other things to cover, leave a comment down below. I'll be glad to do so. And as usual, I'll see you next time.